Hi, this is Margo. This is Tuesday afternoon, July 23rd, 2019, 6.15 p.m. Pacific Time, United States of America. So we're going to look a little bit more at sulfur dioxide, and then we're going to go over the earthquakes worldwide. So we have a new release showing <coughs> here south of um, of Africa right down here I'm thinking it originates in the Indian Ocean here and then it's streaming across it's kinda ha has that signature like an earthquake it's a sudden burst that comes up we also have this okay now this is sulfur dioxide from CAMS from today, Tuesday the 23rd Global View Total Column. We're also still seeing a stream come down. <coughs> now this might be better viewed from the North American view. find that <coughs> um, still coming down um, it could be coming could be coming from up here in Canada that's a hot spot also um, when we go to surface level you'll see this area here up in Seattle and Vancouver releasing this also is a sudden release this has the exclamation point signature of what I see that goes along with earthquake activity this is off the um, northern uh, northern Vancouver Island just to the west and where that is is right up here too far in right up here is where we're looking and so it's in on this Juan de Fuca plate and here's the Cascadia subduction zone so usually when I see this signature then the earthquake happens within the next day or so this is the exclamation point signature so if we go to surface level we're seeing releases here up in Canada but we're not seeing it here because it happens so fast it's you know it just zooms right up into the atmosphere if we run the movie for today now you see <coughs> this release popping up here in the Seattle area this cream colored <coughs> and also down here in Southern California and in the area of where where the earthquakes are the large number of earthquakes so that's one way you can see this stuff <coughs> you can also go <coughs> <coughs> sorry I'm losing my voice here's 500 HPA where it zooms up into the atmosphere usually when it's a um, it's a force an explosive force like with an earthquake or a volcano it'll zoom up into the atmosphere like that so I expect to see something there in in the next somewhere around in here in the next day or so something large I don't know how big 
and I'm just saying from my past experiences of watching this stuff if we look at the Pacific view you can see a little bit better and here's another hot spot and it's streaming across this is coming up out of the Pacific Ocean so we've got a lot going on with sulfur dioxide we're pretty covered up and I think it's caused that mixed in with the methane and the nitrous oxide and or nitrogen dioxide and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide and formaldehyde and everything else that I think that's what's causing a lot of respiratory and breathing problems for people <coughs> so there's an explanation for what's going on um, in addition to all the stuff they're dumping on us so it's all a combo plate so let's get into the earthquakes I have USGS pulled up all magnitudes for the last 24 hours and we're showing 762 earthquakes worldwide now I, I've seen some videos recently where you know people talk about how USGS is altering the data and this and that and I've seen evidence of that but this is still this is the source the one of the big sources that we have um, a lot of people like earthquake 3d I haven't mastered it this is just easy for me to look at and we're gonna see the big stuff along with the sulfur dioxide, the methane, and volcanoes, and you know, looking at NASA worldview, we can get a big picture, and so that's why I use USGS most of the time because it's, it's easy to maneuver and it's just it's just easier for me, and I don't have time to go through and look and see every single earthquake that was altered or taken off or whatever I mean the shit's hitting the fan you know and they can't remove everything and we know we know and so <clears throat> it doesn't matter and you know when you get into the di di the uh, minutia of everything that's then you can get caught up in the details and you're missing the big picture and it's all a distraction you know saying oh well they're moving this or moving that well yeah that's what the dark side does so why would you expect any different we are being lied to that's what Satan does and if you haven't figured out that we're in this spiritual battle and uh, it's light against dark God against Satan if you haven't figured that out by now I can't really help you so um, we're gonna start there was a 3.9 in Cyril's Valley yesterday that came in at 636 last night so let's just look at that event area um, they're showing 485 earthquakes here today of those 11 are two and a half magnitude or higher so one of the larger ones is about to come off the map this 3.9 there was um, 4.1 here at 12.45 this morning and that's the largest one that's happened in the last 24 hours also I took a screenshot I'm taking a screenshot of the event area every day I tried to do it around the same time sometimes I'm a little off 
here it is from today and we're showing this was at 9.12 this morning we're showing 507 earthquakes there and there were 755 worldwide so this is what it looked like at 9.12 this morning Seven fifty five, so that's around the same number of earthquakes worldwide. And um what was it, five hundred and seven? So it's it's just a little bit different, you know. When when you're talking about this number of earthquakes, you know, twenty twenty on either side is within the range. But 485, that's probably, let me see if that's the lowest I've seen. Yeah, that's the lowest I've seen since I've started tracking this. The next lowest was 494 on July the 20th when I took the screenshot that morning. So we're on day 19 since all this started. And it's still swarming. It's still really, really active. So, anyway, let's do with do our report. So we're going to start. Um, okay, this one's coming off the map at 6:55. So let's start. Um, Let's just start down here in New Zealand. They've had they've had some activity. They had a 4.8 near Lesperance Rock. This is in the Kermadec Island region at 6:55 last night, 35 kilometers deep. Then a larger one, a 5.5, came in this afternoon at 4:08 p.m. And these are right next to the red line this tectonic plate here. Then coming on up uh, was a 4.1 near Sagave, Wallace and Futuna at 1228 this afternoon 389 kilometers deep. That'll cause movement of the tectonic plates. Now the star earthquake for today is this 6.0 that happened at the Balany Islands region just north of the Antarctic it's on the red line here it was in the ocean so it didn't do any damage didn't hurt anyone but it came in at 3.33 this morning Pacific time and all these times I'm going to be telling you are Pacific time because that's my time zone now I pulled it up over here on Volcano Discovery. I'll refresh to get the latest. They're reporting it as a 6.1 that happened on Tuesday, July 23rd. Now what was the time? I forgot. 3.33 in the morning Pacific time. Um, so this was um, seven hours later. UTC time is seven hours later from my time. So it happened at 10.33 UTC time on Tuesday and they're calling it a 5.6 here. So anywhere between a 6.1 and a 5.6 way down here. Um, the nearest volcano is Young Island 697 kilometers away and this was equivalent to 1.3 atomic bombs so um, here are the reports of I felt it they were this location was at the ocean 
I was in the ocean over there today where the earthquake was at and I felt it. Well, they were in the ocean. I don't know what that means, whether they were on a ship or what, but <clears throat> or where they were. They had violent shaking. Odessa, Texas says that they felt it, light shaking. They felt it twice. And they are 13,028 kilometers from the epicenter. And here's the troll comment from St. Petersburg, Russia, saying not felt. That automatically shows up on every single earthquake over here. So I'm assuming that's an AI bot that's doing its own reporting. So this is the star today. So that's a big one. And the USGS defaulted it to 10 kilometers. That's the default level on the depth when they don't know the depth or they don't want to report the depth and they're showing it at 10 kilometers here too so we don't really know how deep it was if it was very deep or even not very deep it's going to cause movement around the plates and as we're looking at this ring of fire we're seeing lots and lots of circles all around the same size in the mid mid to high fours range as this as we're moving around here so let's move on around we're already over here here's a 4.6 on the high Indonesia at 133 this morning 4.9 Tanawal Tanawal Indonesia at 809 last night 4.5 Kota Ternate, Indonesia at 2.05 this afternoon. Here's one off the coast of Sumatra. 4.4 Sikabaluan, Indonesia at 10.28 this morning. So we got those. Now let's come on up. Here's one on land at the Philippines, a 4.8 near Parang, Philippines. This came in at 2.38 this morning. Right beside Madrid. 4.8, that could have done damage just depending on the before how close it was to buildings and stuff. Here's a 4.9 at Basco, Philippines, in the ocean, or near Basco, at 6.10 this morning. <coughs> Next is a 4.6 near Chikishima, Japan, at 7.31 last night. Then we've got one on land. <coughs> Looks like next to Tokyo. Here's a 4.4 near Chibashi, Japan at 11.28 last night, 63 kilometers deep. That probably is not big enough to do damage, but the fact that it's on land showing activity definitely. Okay, let's zoom out a little. Now let's... Okay, so nothing on land over here that they're reporting. Okay, let's go to South America. 4.7 near Calingasta, Argentina at 11.39 this morning, 120 kilometers deep. 4.8 near Akari, Peru at 4.41 this morning. And a 4.9 near Pelora, Ecuador 
at 444 this morning, 150 kilometers deep. 4.9, that could have been a 5. That could have done some damage. It looks like it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere. It's on the border between Ecuador and Peru. <coughs> <coughs> Next, um, okay, this is on the coast, 4.5 near Salina Cruz, Mexico, at 7.49 last night. That's all of the international earthquakes. Now we'll go to all magnitudes and take a peek at Hawaii next. We've got 13 here today. So we're seeing this cluster down here at Pahala. We're seeing some activity up here at Kilauea, over here at Mauna Loa, and one right here off the coast of 2.7 near Pepe, Pepe, Keo, Pepe Keo at 9.26 last night. I think we saw one off the coast yesterday, too. Here's a 2.5 at Mauna Loa at 12.19 this afternoon, <coughs> and a 1.9 at Mauna Loa at 5.46 this morning. This is at a minus 0.6 kilometer depth, so that was up. Now here's the crater of Mauna Loa. So this is the flank. All of this is the flank of the earthquake. I mean, not the earthquake, the volcano. And so when you see it up at a negative depth, that's the epicenters up in the chamber there, showing mo movement of the magma up into the chamber. <coughs> now here are the ones for uh, Kilauea. We've got four here. We've got a 2.0 at a negative 0.3 kilometer depth. Let's see, we can see that's on the edge of the crater. Here's a 2.1 down here on the side, and a 1.9 on the other side, and a 2.0 right, right in the crater. That happened at 3.01 this afternoon. So that's getting up there to be in the crater, so Probably we're seeing quite a bit of stuff there. Here's Pahala. We're showing six here today. Uh, 2.6, 2.5, 2.1, 2.0, 2 point 2.1, and 2.0. So these are all in the twos range and getting into the higher twos range. So that's building there. Now coming across to the <coughs> Caribbean, we've got six here today. That's kind of a down tick. 2.1, 2.2, 2.0, 1.0, 1.9, and 1.3. So those are not big enough to do damage and is still showing movement there at Puerto Rico. Now, <clears throat> let's go on up to Alaska. And we're including these in this armpit. I call it the armpit area where it curves up because we have a couple on the side, on the eastern side of it. This is Alaska Territory, but Canada is just like right next to it. So we're showing 82 for Alaska today of all magnitudes. And of those, we're seeing four that are two and a half magnitude or higher. We had a 3.3 near Old Iliamna. This is a volcano. So that's that's getting up there to be near a volcano. This came in at 8.06 last night, 122 kilometers deep. 
2.7 at Big Lake, that's Anchorage. 3.8 Nikiski down here in the Aleutian Islands. And a 2.5 near Petersburg over here. So now let's go to all magnitudes. See, yeah, only one there. So we're going to start. There's that 2.5 near Petersburg, Alaska. Here's a 1.7 Gustavus, Alaska. Here's a 1.6. And a 1.4 in the armpit. Let's look at this Cook Inlet. I see the clustering here. This is around Redoubt Volcano. These are all right around Redoubt. That's a 1.5, 1 1.1, 1 1.8, and then a couple of smaller ones. Here's that 3.3. So. I'm thinking these volcanoes are coming back to life. Now here's the Cook Inlet where it's clustering in. Here's Anchorage, so they had a larger number here today. They had seven right here in the Anchorage area today. This 2.7 was the biggest one. They're calling it Big Lake, but it's the Anchorage area. And they had a 2.2 .2 as well. So we can see them moving up. There's a 2.0 Talkeetna. 1.8 Talkeetna. 2.3 Talkeetna. So we got some, quite a few in the twos range. You can see because they're a little bit larger dots or circles. Now at Kobuk, we've got 12 here today. These are in the ones range and under. And then we've got some small ones up here in northern Alaska. And um, let's see how many we've got here. We've got eight here today. And these are 2.4, that's up there, that's almost a 2.5, that's Arctic Village. And the rest are in the ones in under range. Here's a 1.8. So, definitely seeing movement all the way up through Alaska there. And following this red line, this red tectonic plate line down. See, this is Alaska. And then on the other side of this line is where Canada starts, right here. So Alaska territory goes right down through here, and then this is Canada, British Columbia. So now let's come on down into the lower 48. We're showing 646 here today. I'm going to get my calculator. 646 minus 489 from the event area. So we have a total of 157 other ones. So we're going to start here in Oklahoma. It's showing 7 here today. We've got We've got a cluster at Fairview. We've got a 1.1 at Pawnee. A 0.8 at Moreland. 1.9 at Langston. That just came in. So Moreland is part of this Fairview group. So let's call out the Fairviews. 1.5, 0 0.1, 0.9, um, 0.8 and a 1.4. So that's, we've seen it cluster there before too. Coming across, here's a 
2.5 at Mentone, Texas. This came in at 3.42 this morning. Arizona's clear. Utah. Okay, let's get Oklahoma off the map. Utah is showing 2, a 0.3 at Milford, and a 2.2 at Enoch. So that 2.2 is getting up there. Now in the Yellowstone region, we've got 38 here today. I know it doesn't look like it, but they're stacked up. Um, Old Faithful Geyser is having an event. So we've got 38. So let's zoom in and see what's going on because that's definitely an uptick. So let's catch these, these two, a 1.5 and a point three. These were at West Yellowstone, Montana, well, right over here in Idaho. But that was the reporting station. So, and then here was a point four by itself at Old Faithful Geysers. So, 38. So let's zoom in a little more. So here's Old Faithfuls. 36. And um, we had a larger one there I think. Let's zoom in and see. We had a 2.9. That was at 11.40 last night. 7.9 kilometers deep. So that was the highest. These are different ranges from um, under one, like 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Here's a 1.4, 2.1. Um, here's these are under one. Here's some at zero. Here's a 1.3. I'll just call out some of the larger ones: 1.1, 1 1.1, 2.4, 1.4, 2.4, 2.4. And 1.2, and the rest are under ones. So, Old Faithful is coming back to life. These are all 13 kilometers north northeast of Old Faithful Geyser. Now coming into the Pacific Northwest area. We're showing six on the map here. Uh, I'm not going to count this one down here. This 2.8. It's off the coast of Northern California. So we're showing six here today. Let's look at the trimmer map. So here it is from yesterday. There were 194. We're seeing them on this northern Vancouver Island. And then clustering, huge cluster down here in southern Oregon. Just uh, between Medford and Roseburg it looks like. Let's see if they've got any data yet for today. They didn't have it a little while ago. Okay, they do have some data for today. They're showing 117 so far for today. And it's still... Okay, nothing up here um, in the northern part. So they're, they're down here to the west of Medford and then up here by Roseburg. So this is where, so here's Medford, so they're clustering over here, and Roseburg is about right here, so they're clustering over here too. So the tremors are what happen before you see earthquakes. They measure these tremors with seismographs. <coughs> And they're important. 
we've got an explosion a 2.0 explosion near Waitsburg, Washington. This came in at 12 noon at a minus 0.3 kilometer depth. That hints to me that some kind of uh, attached to a quarry blaster construction or something like that. Right there. Next was a point eight at Royal City. Up here, a point A at Friday Harbor. Now that's just off the coast of Victoria. Remember we saw a bunch of sulfur dioxide here. Here's a point eight at Packwood and a point five at Amboy and another explosion in 1.2 at Sweet Home. Now that's not where those clusters are. The clusters are a little bit further south. Um, here's Roseburg. So the trimmers are over in this area and right down here. Grants Pass and then over here between Roseburg and Eugene. So this point five near Amboy, here's Mount St. Helens, and here's this point eight at Packwood is um, right next to the crater. There's the crater. And this is Mount Rainier. These are both volcanoes where these are showing up. So I'm thinking a bunch of these volcanoes could come back to life. Okay, next we've got a 2.8 that happened in this Cascadia subduction zone right next to this Juan de Fuca plate. They're calling it near Trinidad, California. It's off the coast. This came in at 8.53 last night. And look how the red line goes away. They don't want people to see. But it connects right here at this fulcrum point. Let's come on over to Nevada now. <coughs> in the Reno area today. Here's a point six. They're saying Spanish Springs is just south of Pyramid Lake. Here's a minus point one near Truckee and a 1.0 near Incline. That's up in the mountains north of Lake Tahoe. Here we've got a cluster of five at Virginia City. We've been seeing some activity at Virginia City the last few days. Here's a 1.3. This started at 8.47 last night. A 1.0, 1 1.0, 1 0.3, and a 1.5. And that one came in at 8.07 this morning. So that's a 12 hour period. They're, they have um, got a lot of mines up there, silver mines, gold mines. But Virginia City is known for its silver mining. <coughs> Here's a point eight near Urington. Point seven Hawthorne. Point four. So we got some small ones down here in Hawthorne. Here's a one point three. Just across the state line is a point three at Bridgeport. So we're seeing some activity down here in Hawthorne, some small ones. Now, <clears throat> here's a 1.9 at Warm Springs. Here's a 2.4 at Courant. And a 1.6 Warm Springs, but it was right next to the 2.4. 
and then only two right here in southern Nevada. Um, minus 0.3 Beatty and then minus 0.5 at Beatty. <coughs> so that's Nevada for you. Let's come on down this east side. So at Mono I mean, Mammoth Lakes we've got four here today. The largest one is this 1.4 at Oakhurst. It's a little bit to the west of Mammoth Lakes. That's what's in the view. Now this came in at 9.34 last night and the depth is a minus 2.4 kilometer depth. So that's up in the mountain. Do you want to see where that is? That sounds unusual to me. I've not looked at this area before so let's just fire up Google Google Earth and <clears throat> see what we can see. What's this? There's some that looks it looks like it's just all rocks there. Bear, yeah, Bear Mountain there. Okay, so the epicenter was right over here. So this is on the side of a mountain. That's up in the Camino, Camino Creek, Camino area. So that's where that happened. But look at this big bald spot. I'm I'm just curious about that. They might have hard to say. I'm not as good as Dutch Sense is on going in and analyzing what the terrain is telling us. I'm learning, but he's definitely He's been doing this a lot more years than I have. Here's some lines. Some straight lines. I wonder if this is indicative of some old drilling or mining or something. Maybe Dutch will let us know. Here's, some, here's another one. So we've got a lot, bunch of bunch of these lines. So there's that. So that's where that earthquake happened. A one point four. All right. Now, okay. There's the event area. Here's a here's a straggler. Uh, point O, they're calling that near Beatty. We'll come back to the event area last. Let's come back up to Northern California now. Here's one, a 1.4 near Port Arena. And here's the geysers. They're showing 30 here today. I'm going to check to see if any of these are two and a half or larger. No, they're not. Most of these are, it looks like, low ones. Here's a 1.8. <coughs> and most of them were ones. Here's a 2.0. I think that's the highest I saw. So, low ones. Here's a 1.7. That just came in. So, 30. That's kind of an average number there. 
Coming on down, here's a 1.0 near Livermore. This came in at 321 this morning. Here's a 2.8 at Gilroy at 9.51 this morning. 1.1 San Juan Batista. 0.9 Trace Pinos. 1.9 Lopez Point. 1.4 Park Field. 1.2 Templeton. And look how the red line goes away temporarily. Here's a 2.4 Granada Hills and a 1.3 Granada Hills. 1.1 Little Rock. Here's a 2.2 at Boron. Now in Southern California today, minus the event area, <coughs> I'll take Boron off the map here. We're seeing 37. So that's kind of an average number that we see in Southern California. Um, here's a cluster. This is at 29 Palms where we saw that cluster yesterday and that large one, what was it, a three or four? So we've got some more at 29 Palms. In this viewing right here, or seven right here, uh, 1.3 is the highest. So that's still showing movement. <coughs> Here's another quarry blast to 1.6 near Home Gardens, and so on. So let's just scroll through. So these are ones, ones and under. They're just peppered around. So now. Finally, let's, uh-oh, look at that. Here's a 1.9 explosion near Sandy Valley, Nevada. So when we zoom out like this, we can see it's kind of morphing out, looking like a crab or something. In this event area. And we have a straight line of earthquakes coming across here. And then a straight line here. It's spreading out into the mountains to the west. This is Johannesburg and California City. It's spreading out to the right. And see we've got straight lines here that go across to Nevada and all the way up. If, if we extend this straight line we end up with this 2.2 at Enoch, Utah. So I think they're all connected. There's the one at Boron. So here's a 2.8 Johannesburg. So let's go back to our two and a half magnitude or higher and just look through these. So the largest one was this, oh, 4.1 at Cyril's Valley. This came in at right after midnight last night at 1245. So we're showing nine here that are two and a half magnitude or higher. So the first one was this 4.1, then a 2.7. 
2.7, 2.5, and 2.5, 2.5, and 3.6 just came, uh, came in at 4.45 at Little Lake. So that 4.1 is still showing a lot of movement there. And so with only 9 or 2.5 magnitude or higher out of 491 earthquakes, you've got, you've got 400 and 482 that are less than 2.5 magnitude. So it's just chipping away, chipping away, chipping away, showing movement, opening up those fault lines and the crack that's running running through the desert. So what's going to happen? I think that we're in the end times and I think that we need to prepare be prepared for anything and I think huge catastrophes are upon us and I think a lot of people are are gonna die soon and I think you need to get right with God and Jesus that's what I think this one just came in and 1.6 near Redway at 7 o'clock tonight and we can see that's right at this fulcrum point where the San Andreas fault line meets the Juan de Fuca plate. And especially considering what I've seen on the sulfur dioxide and everything, it's um, it's not looking good. Seeing movement of the plates. Uh-oh. Look at this. This just came in. Is this on land? No. Uh, 5.1 near uh, Sumbarasri, Indonesia. This came in at 629, 103 kilometers deep. That was in the ocean, so that probably didn't do any damage. Let's check out the tsunami warning. Uh, no, the latest warnings were from the 21st, so. If there is a tsunami warning, we don't know about it. So if that had been on land, that could have done damage, but with it being in the ocean, probably didn't, although it can cause landslides, underwater landslides, which can cause tidal waves, that would not register as tsunamis. Remember we saw that. We've seen that happen. So let's see if that's showing up on on the earthquakes yet. <coughs> yeah, here it is, the Bali region. This just came in. Five point one they're registering a 5.0 there 40 minutes ago. Depth 113 kilometers. The nearest volcano is Raung, 82 kilometers away. It's equivalent to 647 tons of TNT. Wow, look at all these I felt it reports already in 40 minutes. Look at all these people. They felt it even though it was in the ocean. Let's see what some of these people have said. Um, woke me up, bed was shaking. Took me a minute to realize what was happening. They were 109 kilometers from the epicenter. They said strong shaking. Here's someone from Ubud. I felt it. It wasn't strong like the one 
It lasted for three to four seconds. They said that was light shaking. Here's from Kuta townhouses, 110 kilometers from the epicenter. Weak shaking, very light shaking, and just a few seconds. Okay, so they felt it, but I'm not seeing damage. Here's someone from Jimberin, Bali. Medium rumbling, the sudden jolt to building before stopping only a few seconds long. Here's someone, they were on the rooftop in the hotel uh, at Bal Bali. Uh, the fella de delice during few seconds. That looks like a kind of a combo English and and Indonesian mix there in their writing. Sat sat on the balcony of our hotel two floors up, felt shaking side to side, left up and went indoors and it stopped after a few seconds. That was at the Depenjor Hotel. was on my balcony in resort on top floor fifth story sliding door shook and rattled and could feel the building slightly shaking under me so they felt light shaking that was at the holiday inn Baruna Bali Kuta so, see, a lot of people are vacationing, and so, you know, they've got their cell phones, and they're texting in all, all the reports. Look at this, probably a hundred, a hundred reports at least. Window shaking, lamp. Um, I can feel somehow the house was shaky. So, mainly a lot of shaking. I'm not seeing any damage. So... People felt it and are reporting. <clears throat> 5.1 earthquake just happened. Right down here. Near Bali. I'll show you where Bali is. Bali is right here. So... This is the Bali Basin. Bali is right here, so it was just on the other side of this island next to Bali, not on the other side of that little peninsula. So this is a very active region for earthquakes and volcanoes. What's this? Just came in. 2.1 Cyril's Valley. That's in the event area. What's this? 0.6 Cobb. Okay. Well, I'm going to sign off for now. I'll back out and make sure there's not anything else that came in that I didn't see. 3.6 Little Lake. I think we saw that. We saw Lesperance Rock. We saw all those. So, I'm going to sign off for now. And I hope everyone has made their plans for whatever, whatever eventuality is before them. And for me, I'm not planning on leaving where I'm at. I'm going to shelter in place and write it out whatever happens and if I die I die that's kinda how I feel at this point so until next time this is Margo signing off God bless you go in peace and I'll talk to you soon good night